quick update on, on what we're doing. Uh, we have a, a very important three or four months ahead of us with uh, multiple drill programs that will be commencing uh, and exploration programs funded by partner companies as well as uh, our 2,500 meter upcoming drill program at our flagship Moore Lake project. Um, I'll get right into it. Um, like to start with this uh, quick summary acronym that, that we use, the, really the three pillars uh, of Sky Harbor, it's people, timing, and projects. Management team, the technical team, uh, led by Rick Kizmersky in Saskatoon, uh, timing with the uranium market. Now this is needless to say, it's, you know, it's been a up and down market for the better part of the last uh, eight, nine years. We, we've had a glimpse of hope uh, at, at certain periods of time in, in 2017, 2018, and uh, it's been a tough seven months, as we all know, the uncertainty created by 232 in the Nuclear Fuel Working Group. Uh, you know, the spot price has kind of languished here in that uh, mid-20s, but uh, we, I, I truly believe we've seen a trend reversal from 2016. We're setting that base and we're building up to uh, an impending bull mark, and I'll talk a little bit about some of the upcoming catalysts to look out for uh, when you're looking at the commodity itself. And then last but not least, the projects. Um, so as, as some of you may know, we employ a dual prong strategy. First and foremost, we are one of the few remaining high grade discovery and exploration companies actively drilling and exploring in the Athabasca Basin. We're out there looking to emulate the success that recent discoveries been made by companies like NextGen, like Fission, Denison at the Griffin Deposit, Hathor previously. There's not many of us left. Uh, so if you're looking for that exposure to high grade discovery, uh, this is one of the companies that you'll be looking at. Secondly, prospect generation. And we've more recent, just recently, been adding to that. Uh, we've been acquiring ground. Again, in this kind of a market, you can acquire good projects for pennies on the dollar. Uh, we're looking to continue to execute on that strategy, bring in partner companies that can fund the exploration. And it also helps bring in some cash and stock for us that we can then use and not have to continuously dilute. So just quickly, uh, I run the company uh, here. Uh, you'll see my, my head geologist, uh, Rick Kazmersky, or, or Radioactive Rick, as, as we like to call him, below me. So we've been running it, started it about six years ago. Again, we, we, we see an opportunity to go out there and build that next uh, uranium exploration development company. Um, Jim Pettit, the chairman who I work with here, um, Dave Cates, who just presented, he's a director of the company. It's an important part of our story. Denison Mines being our largest strategic shareholder. Very close working relationship with Dave and the team. Paul Matizic, uh, well known in the industry, a strategic advisor. Uh, you'll see there, and this is important, I think, to highlight. When you do have a uranium market, these are the kinds of returns that you can see where you take a $10 million vehicle, uranium company, three years later it's being sold for 1.8 billion that was uh, when we had that last uranium boom so you know it's one of the few commodities one of the few sectors where you can see that kind of return in such a short period of time go right in here so the capital structure 75 million shares issued and outstanding uh, we're trading at about a 12 and a half million dollar valuation and I think this is a key takeaway here the value proposition right now uh, I think is the best it's ever been. You can see what I've been doing in the market. I've bought hundreds of thousands of shares uh, in the open market recently. Uh, I look at it from the simple lens of what are the upcoming catalysts, multiple drill programs, and at the current valuation, one drill hole, one high grade intercept uh, in any one of these upcoming programs uh, will significantly change that number. You'll see some of the notable and strategic shareholders. I'll just note that we, we did raise uh, just under two million before Christmas. Most of it was institutional and family funds uh, so it's good to see we're still seeing that institutional support for a smaller cap name you'll see their management and insiders Denison Marin and the KCR fund OTP Sachem Cove partners L2 uh, a few others that have come in so there, there there's not many uranium uh, investors out there but the few that are still there they understand the story and I think you will see that change in the next 12 months I think you're going to see a lot of this money that's on the sidelines right now come into this sector as we see the price continue to recover um, so I'll get right into this I, I won't spend too much time the t timing of where we're at in the cycle as I said I, I truly believe early days of the recovery one of the things that's more topical I think today more so than ever is climate change uh, protests and and uh, issues that we're seeing right now globally and and I think 
in the next 12 to 24 months, this is going to be an important theme and narrative for nuclear energy. You have people like Bill Gates, Michael Schellenberger, who's a well-known anti-nuclear environmentalist who's done a complete 180, and the numbers simply don't lie. You take France and Germany, for example. We have a partner company, a state-run company called Arano out of France. Uh, we, we're, we're in touch with them quite a bit, but if you look at uh, Germany versus France here, I think this is pretty, pretty telling. 160 billion euro investment by Germany into green energy, into renewables, and as a result of that, it hasn't stemmed any of their carbon emissions. In fact, uh, if you look out on a per kilowatt hour of electricity generated, Germany generates about 10 times that that France does. France is over 72% in nuclear. Um, and, uh, and then you add on uh, a, a basically a 100% higher electricity costs, right? So not only are they not reducing their carbon emissions, but they're actually paying a lot more for that for that electricity, and it's it's well known that the, uh, the 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 French are actually selling Western Germany electricity at a premium. Well, where do you think that electricity is coming from? It's coming from nuclear. So keep an eye out uh, as we see more and more. Uh, I would say anti-nuclear uh, people shift to being pro-nuclear, and this climate change narrative really, I think, propel and improve sentiment for this sector. So just getting into the uranium market. You've seen these slides before, but just to go over, uh, significant primary mine su supply deficit that's formed about 40 million pounds. Uh, what's important there at the bottom are these contracts. Again, we need to see utilities come back to the market. I will note utility procurement started increasing uh, at the end of last year. Uh, it increased to a level we haven't seen in many, many years. So we are starting to see that utility interest come back as these contracts roll off. You'll see that continue, but that's really what's going to drive this market. We're not drive it from $25 a pound to 30, but 25 to 50, 60, 70. You need to see these utilities come back to the market. And as you see, they have no choice but to do that in the next several years. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, the global supply. We all know there's been uh, significant uh, curtailment, uh, mine shut-ins. All, we all know MacArthur River uh, has been shut down indefinitely, will not come back on until we see a much higher uranium price. These companies now have to purchase uh, this material or secure this material from some other source. In the case of Cameco, 18 to 20 million pounds of uranium that they're going to have to find in 2020. Now, if they can get that from somewhere outside of the spot market, they'll try and do that. But chances are they're going to have to buy, continue to buy a lot of material directly out of the spot market, which will be supportive for prices going forward. Uh, I think you, you eventually see all of this supply that's come offline work its way into the market. We're starting to see that. I would not be surprised to see additional cuts. We saw in early 2017 the impact that one announcement out of Kazakhstan had on the market uh, where basically everything almost doubled overnight on that first uh, initial production cut announcement. So look out for additional cuts and also look out for existing mines that are simply running out of reserves and resources that are being depleted. Probably a lot of you are familiar with the Athabasca Basin, it's the highest grade depository uh, of uranium in the world. It's really, in my opinion, the only place you want to be looking for or uh, uranium or developing projects right now. You'll see here a big land package. Now, just to uh, put some numbers on this, uh, we've acquired the, the, collectively these projects, about 250,000 hectares of ground, uh, projects at various stages uh, from earlier stage grassroots exploration, more advanced stage exploration, a couple of deposits, including our high grade Maverick zone, which is the one we're currently exploring and drilling at our Moore Lake project. But we've done a good job being opportunistic acquiring these projects for about $5 million Canadian. They've had over $90 million invested in them in a historical exploration. And just to give you an idea of re-rating re potential in a better uranium market, two of those projects were in a company in 2006, 2007 that was valued at over $350 million. Uh, we're currently trading at about $12.5 million market cap. So the re-rating potential is there. Uh, as I said earlier, we have a dual-pronged strategy, again, first and foremost, our main focus and our upcoming drill program at our flagship Moore Lake project. Uh, one of the key highlights with this program is We've done a fair bit of drone geophysics over the last couple of years. We've done a, a geological remodeling. We've done a lot of work to lead into this drill program, including the results from some previous exploratory drill holes. And this is really our best shot at making a new high-grade large discovery in the underlying basement rocks. For those of you not familiar with 
the basement rocks, most of the recent high grade discoveries have been found in the basement rocks looking for these feeder zones. So we're drilling 2,500 2, meters, very specifically looking for high grade basement hosted deposits below the high grade that we know we have. We have results up to upwards of 21% in the sandstone, but we want to now look a little bit deeper. So that'll be commencing here shortly. Keep an eye out for news flow on that. It's probably our most important catalyst coming up and really our best shot at making a new discovery on this project. Uh, last but not least, just to finish off, so not much time left, uh, you'll see here over on the west side of the Athabasca Basin, two projects that we've optioned to two partner companies, one of which, as I mentioned, Arano, France's largest uranium mining company, state run, uh, and then another company called Azincourt. Collectively, these companies are spending upwards of $12 million uh, in exploration and in cash pay being paid. We also get some cash payments this year from our partner companies, uh, and they're paying for all the exploration. So upcoming 2,500 meter drill program at our Pre uh, East Preston project by Azincourt, and Arano is planning a big geophysical and field program That'll lead into a drill program later this year. So multiple irons in the fire. It's not just what we're doing at our flagship. Our partner companies are actively exploring our other projects. And just to finish off here, uh, so again, getting back to um, the upcoming catalysts, um, again, multiple drill programs, 5,000 meters collectively, uh, three programs that'll be underway. Um, again, I think the timing with the uranium market, it's been a tough market, but uh, it's always darkest before the dawn, and I really do believe with all the upcoming catalysts, uh, spot market purchasing by Cameco, I think this uh, the climate change narrative is, is going to continue to push people uh, in, the, in the right direction towards nuclear. Uh, you've seen conversion and enrichment prices increasing, which is an important note uh, that, that's getting overlooked. So I think we're going to see that, that spot price and the, and the uranium price breakout. We have the news flow, the catalyst, uh, the timing uh, with that. Uh, and as I said earlier, PTP people, timing and projects, the dual prong strategy of high grade discovery at our flagship uh, with partner companies funding exploration at our non-core assets. Uh, thank you. We'll be at booth uh, 404. Feel free to come by. Happy to chat more.